Ever since India contained the second wave after a unprecedented devastation, there has been a talk about the possibility of third wave. Not just the experts, even the government of our sources also accepted the possibility of third wave hitting the country. The adv scientific advisor to the government of India has also acknowledged the uh, uh, possible out, uh, uh, attack of the third wave you know, on India. In fact, uh, the very pandemic character reveals that uh, it comes in several waves. Even the developed countries like United States, European nations, Japan could not even avoid the multiple waves. That's the character of this virus. So obviously, India also can't avoid a possible next wave. Well, but when will it come? How will it come? It all depends on many factors, primarily on four aspects. One the transmission process, how fast the COVID appropriate behavior allows the transmission of the virus. Secondly, the uh, vaccination, the, the public policy process, especially the vaccination and how does the government plan for its for interventions and in, in anti-pandemic uh, measures. Third aspect is the, the mutation process. So, how, uh, how does the virus mutate and what will be the situation uh, of the new uh, uh, variants and how lethal these new variants will be. The fourth aspect is the human behavior process. How do we, we the people uh, react to the, uh, the fallen number of cases and rising cases. So, therefore, it is impossible to predict the exact time and date and and period of the third wave, though almost there is a consensus on the possibility of the third wave. But the data in July has given much more clearer indication about the impending third wave. Earlier, the scientists have predicted that the third wave may occur somewhere between August and February, with an overwhelming number concurring on the uh, uh, possibility of third wave in the month of October. But the latest data, especially the uh, pandemic trajectory in July, reveals that the third wave may be a possibility in this month itself. The IIT study also acknowledges this. So, there is a possibility of third wave in the month of August. However, the overwhelming prediction is that the third wave may not be as devastating as the second wave and the number of cases may be around the peak of uh, in number of cases may be around 1 lakh to 1 and a half lakh cases. Still 1 lakh to 1 and a half lakh cases is very high because during the first wave we are not even touched the 1 lakh. But it is substantially lesser than the second wave where the peak was almost over 4 lakh cases. Why is this prediction coming now? It is precisely because the month of July especially the last week have seen increased number of cases. In the last 7 days Almost every day India has reported over 40,000 cases. So, uh, as uh, in the last 24 hours, India has reported over 41,000 cases. Not only that, the daily new case average in the last week was 7% higher than that of the previous week. And look at the number of states which are reporting rise in cases. This has also increased from 5 states last week to the 11 states this week. So, which means in the, in the recent week, 11 states have reported rising cases. In the previous week, only 5 states reported rise in the number of cases. So, there is a clear indication that the number of cases are increasing in the country. The government of India has written to as many as 9 states uh, to immediately adopt measures to prevent uh, crowding of uh, places and other measures. Other, uh, other containment measures, other restrictions to be in place to avoid the third wave devastation. So, the government of India has written letters to Kerala, Maharashtra, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, Assam, uh, Meghalaya, Mizoram, Odisha. So, it has written letters to all these states where there are uh, districts with test positivity rate of over 10 percent. The latest data by the ICMR also reveals that uh, 46 districts have a test positivity rate of over 10 percent. 
well kerala as a, as a whole as a state is having a test positivity rate of 10% and above and in another 53 districts the test positivity rate is between 5 and 10 which is above the national average of 5% so the test positivity rate is also increasing even the uh, the r factor which is always which is generally considered as an indicator to gauge the trajectory of the pandemic is also increasing on june 8 the r value in india was 0.65 but now it is crossing 1.0 so all these statistics reveal that uh, there is an upsurge in the pandemic there is a surge in the pandemic well we have to see how will the trajectory be in the near future but as of now the july data reveal a surge in the number of cases well uh, and let me also rec- uh, recall your attention to the fourth serological survey which revealed that nearly 40 crore people are still vulnerable to the uh, to the novel coronavirus because the uh, the survey the zero survey revealed that uh, around 68% of people ha- have reported antibodies in them so the presence of antibodies may be due to earlier infection or vaccination still 40 crore indians are uh, have not reported antibodies so they are vulnerable to covid-19 so given the fact that there are 40 crore people vulnerable to the uh, to the possibility of the uh, infection well the third wave seems imminent unfortunately the only deterrent to the severe third wave is the a pace of vaccination india is still lagging behind in vaccination the government of india wanted to inoculate 94.4 crore adults above the age of 18 by the end of the dis- by, by end of the 2021 so the, the estimated number of indians above the age of 18 were over 94 crore and in the government of india planned for by in uh, for immunization of all these people by the end of december 21 but this seems to be a far fetched target today because if we have to achieve this target at least 90 to 1 90 lakh to 1 crore vaccines have to be administered every day but in the entire month of july the total vaccinations did never cross 60 lakh per day so they were somewhere between 30 lakh to 60 lakh and uh, so therefore it is unlikely that the targeted uh, targeted vaccination will be completed by the end of the december well the absolute numbers may be very high india has immunized india has given 47.1 crore vaccines till now but that is only one part of the story the other way of looking at the story is that only 11% of the population above the age of 45 have been immunized so far Where, though 80% of those hospitalized and those who lo- uh, 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 those who lost the lives were above the age of 45 in the both the first and second wave so the people above the age of 45 are more vulnerable still vaccination is at a very slow pace compared to the target the foreign vaccines are unlikely to come in near future there is a challenge with with, uh, with the indemnity provisions Uh, the recent reports indicate that the johnson and johnson has withdrawn its uh, application for emergency use authorization covaxin is unable to ramp up the production as per the schedule uh, because of several reasons so therefore india is still lagging behind in vaccination and this is a con- as a matter of concern at a time when the number of cases are rising and the rise in number of cases gives rise to a possible variants emerging also this is the biggest challenge whenever the cases rise there is always a possibility of new variants emerging due to mutation let's hope that india will be well prepared to tackle the third wave